Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, predictboxing.blogspot.com, and uh, I'm here to talk about a fascinating fight that's just been announced. It's Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. going up against Alfonso Gomez. Now, I believe this fight is a very dangerous optical illusion, right? Much of boxing is illusory. Gomez is probably the better technician in the fight. People remember that he is the fighter who took out Jose Luis Castillo. Castillo retired after the fight. He's the fighter who dropped Arturo Gatti in a fight in which Larry Hazard at ringside was so disturbed by the beating that Gotti was taking that he actually hopped in the ring to stop the fight. So I've uh, corresponded with more than one person who believes that Chavez Jr., who's widely perceived as an underachiever with an overinflated, unbeaten record, who recently changed trainers. Uh, I've spoken with more than one person who believes that he's going to get his, he's going to lose, to Alfonso Gomez. My take is don't believe the hype. I like Chavez in this fight. In fact, I think Chavez wins this fight comfortably because of the way the fight is put together. Let me point out that when Gomez fought Gotti, when Gomez fought Castillo, he fought both in the 140s, right? Even his fight against Miguel Cotto was fought at 147. This fight, according to BoxRec.com, is actually for the WBC Silver middleweight title. Folks, middleweight ain't in the 140s. It's not even in the 150s. Middleweight is 160. The other thing to remember, too, is the trainer that Chavez has now is none other than Freddie Roach. A couple other facts. Forget his father, who, you know, fought at lower weights, right? Understand that Chavez Jr. is a big man. You know, Paul Williams is listed at 6'1. I suspect he's 6'1, 6'2. Understand that Chavez is six feet tall. He is a big middleweight, right? Um, Gomez is only 5'9". Not only that, if you dig a little bit deeper, you'll see that Gomez, and keep in mind, Gomez has never fought at middleweight. Even fighting in the 140s, Gomez only has 11 career KOs, right? I believe that technique is only going to take him so far because he doesn't have the power to back it up and he's in against a guy in Chavez who is bigger, who is stronger. Chavez's left hook is the punch in this fight, right? Chavez is faster, has better hand speed. Understand, too, that Chavez doesn't have to fight inside hunched over like he always does, right? He does a uh, good impersonation at times of the UK's Nathan Cleverly, right? Chavez, if he wanted, can actually stand straight up, use length, shoot a jab, and win the fight from distance. And um, he has a beautiful jab. He actually has stood up straight, used a jab, used hand speed, see his last fight against John Duddy at 160, right? And you will see that Chavez actually has the tools if he wants to simply win this fight from distance. He can be a volume puncher against the counter punching Alfonso Gomez and he could actually just physically overpower Alfonso Gomez. So uh, I've heard a lot of people who tell me that I'm much too sanguine about Chavez Jr. I think this fight is a mismatch. I even will go further and say that I believe that your base bet should be Chavez Jr. to win the fight, but you do want to have a little kicker, you know, just a little portion of your bet on Chavez Jr. to win the fight by knockout. Because understand, Cotto was able to stop Gomez at 147, 
and Cotto punching at 147, in my opinion, doesn't equate. In fact, it's less than Chavez Jr.'s left hook at 160. Don't believe the hype. Maybe Chavez Jr. didn't train properly and didn't take his career seriously until now. But I believe Chavez Jr. is ahead of Alfonso Gomez, and I think he's the one with more power in this fight. Let me also ask a simple question. John Duddy at 160, and I know Chavez beat him in the last fight, but let me hear from you, the viewer. Do you really believe that Alfonso Gomez, who hasn't fought at 160, would beat John Duddy? I don't think so. And Chavez Jr. beat John Duddy handily. So, to sum up, my base bet on this one is actually Chavez Jr. to win the fight. With a little kicker, depends on your risk tolerance, depends on how you want to structure the bet. With a kicker, it could be just the anticipated winnings of Chavez Jr. to win, you know, thrown on uh, Chavez Jr. to win by knockout. But I do feel that you want some exposure to the prop of Chavez Jr. to win by knockout. Because understand, if he comes in and if he dazes Alfonso Gomez, he's the bigger man. He has the hand speed. He'll be able to then take a step inside and close the show. I like Chavez Jr. to win this fight. That's my base. Chavez Jr. by knockout is my kicker. Um... Uh, all I can say about Alfonso Gomez, and I know I'm going to get emails about how Alfonso Gomez might gain weight between the weigh-in and a fight and things like that. All I can say is he is a brave man. He is a technician, but he's fighting out of weight class on this one. Also, let's talk about the politics real quick. Understand that Chavez Jr., you know, uh, people like Oscar De La Hoya have actually commented on the boxing rumor that Chavez Jr. is a free agent, right? Um, Chavez Jr. is fighting under top rank right now. Apparently, Golden Boy might also be interested in his services. Chavez Jr. has given comments to interviewers that uh, he himself believes he's a free agent. I know Bob Arum, the head of top rank, believes that he has Chavez Jr. for the next two years under contract. My point to you is this. If there's any uncertainty about... Chavez Jr.'s contractual status, I don't think he would take a fight that's high risk uh, where he's jeopardizing a future contract. I believe that his people, top rank, have looked at Gomez and they realize that Gomez is 5'9". Chavez Jr. is 6 feet tall and Chavez Jr. is the faster, harder hitting uh, puncher. By the way, the speed is not just a hand speed advantage is also a foot speed advantage and understand too that a hallmark of Freddie Roach fighters is that they know how to use distance in the ring. Just think about Manny Pacquiao, how he darts in and out. Think about Amir Khan, how he darts in and out. Take a look at Amir Khan's fight against Andre Kotelnik. I thought Kotelnik beat Devin Alexander, but I do believe that Amir Khan, again from distance, beat Andre Kotelnik. Understand that a counterpuncher will have problems with volume and length, and that's exactly the hurdle that Alfonso Gomez is facing in this fight. I like Chavez Jr. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com, and note that we also have a page on Facebook entitled gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.